Energy efficiency has always been the top concern when discussing the viability of hydrogen fuel cell technology for not only transportation, but also energy storage. Don't get me wrong, this is certainly an important challenge that this new technology needs to overcome to reach effective scale over the long term. But to think that lower energy efficiency on a round trip basis is a reason to not invest or use a technology, in my opinion, is a very broken argument. When it comes to economic viability, growth and scale, efficiency is not as big of a concern as many people are making it out to be. And that is exactly what I want to address in this video. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. To start things off, let's try to understand why the efficiency concern has bubbled up to the top of the green hydrogen dilemma. People all over the world are talking about decarbonization, but when it comes to fuel cell technology, the biggest concern is about energy efficiency. As you can see, converting energy from electricity to hydrogen, compressing it, transporting it, storing it, and then converting it back into energy is around 30 to 35 percent efficient. And although this seems really bad on paper, people tend to forget rather quickly where we're actually coming from. Because you see, diesel and gasoline internal combustion engines themselves are barely 20% efficient at best. As a result, it's estimated that the total crude oil to horsepower efficiency in your car is only around 22%, comparing that to 35% of hydrogen. And when you consider the amount of heat, particulate matter, and CO2 emissions those gasoline engines emit, the efficiency and environmental impact benefits of fuel cells are undeniable. But obviously, the media does not really care about that. They care about how fuel cell electric vehicles compare to their nearest competing technology in air quotes to battery electric. Battery electric cars are obviously extremely simple, so why would people invest in fuel cell automotive technology if the efficiency and simplicity of battery electric is so high? Well, the answer to that question is not as simple as many people think it is, and that is exactly why it's also a very difficult one to understand. First of all, it's important to understand that a fuel cell electric vehicle is a generation device. It is creating electricity on demand using an electrochemical process, meaning you're converting hydrogen to electricity and using that electricity to power your vehicle. On the other hand, in a battery electric vehicle, you are simply performing energy storage, not energy generation. You're storing electric power that was generated hundreds of miles away at a natural gas or coal fired plant and storing it in your vehicle for later use. This is why the paper round trip efficiency of a battery electric vehicle is much higher than that of a fuel cell vehicle, because both of them are powering their motors in a completely different way. The fuel cell vehicle on the right is much more similar to a gasoline engine, where an engine is producing energy on demand to power the wheels. Whereas on the left, you are not making the energy on demand. Instead, you're using energy that was already made by a power plant and storing it for later use. Converting chemical energy to electricity is a different process than storing electric energy in the form of electric energy in a battery. That's why energy efficiency losses happen because converting one form to the other is always an energy intensive process. There's a lot of heat and emissions involved, which is why gasoline engines themselves are so inefficient. And believe it or not, a fuel cell is the most energy efficient way of converting fuel to electricity known by mankind. In the past, the only way we've been able to convert fuels that we've dug out of the ground into electric power has been through combustion, which generates lots of heat. But the revolutionary thing about fuel cells is they can allow us to do the same process without combustion, without moving parts, and without any emissions. And because obviously a battery is not performing any of these chemical reactions itself, the supply chain for that electric energy coming into that battery is completely abstracted from the efficiency picture. With a hydrogen supply chain, on the other hand, because you're converting that fuel into energy, people are very adamant about talking about the overall supply chain related conversion losses. 
But people fail to realize these losses exist also for the electric grid. As a matter of fact, making electricity from a natural gas power plant is more inefficient than making hydrogen gas from a similar power plant. Using a turbine to convert natural gas heat into electricity is at best 57% energy efficient. But steam methane reforming, which is the most popular way of making hydrogen gas, happens to be around 65 to 75% efficient. Meaning the majority of the North American continent is currently sourcing its electricity from a way of making that electricity that is more inefficient than making hydrogen. And so yeah, when you're just considering the end usage in a fuel cell vehicle, the efficiency is lower than battery electric. But if you account for the entire supply chain from production to usage, the US electric grid is almost as inefficient as the hydrogen usage process. And as far as I can tell, even though natural gas energy production and the electric grid are around 40 to 30% efficient, people are still using it on a day to day basis. That's the same story for internal combustion engines, which again, like I said, are 20% efficient, yet people are using them on a day to day basis. So it's pretty clear that energy efficiency is not the reason why technology will not be able to take off. Hydrogen is a multi billion dollar industry today that is already used in the production of various chemicals and products. Every single piece of food you have in your house today was used to make using fertilizer, which itself is always produced using hydrogen and nitrogen gas. And all the steel and glass used to prop up skyscrapers and your house is also manufactured using hydrogen refining. There are certain sectors that batteries simply can't help us decarbonize, whether that be aviation, shipping, or heavy duty trucking, where weight and range matter much more than energy efficiency. Those factors play more into the cost per mile for those businesses than just the energy efficiency of the electricity or hydrogen that they're using. It's a big reason why consumers don't go into dealerships and ask the energy efficiency of their Toyota Camry. Instead, they care more about the miles per gallon, the cost to run the vehicle and its practicality. At higher duty cycles, lithium ion batteries tend to lose watt hour efficiency. This is because they tend to face self discharge and they tend to require a power and capacity figure that is always interlinked. As a result, you can't use lithium technology on an airplane or a ship to travel across the Atlantic Ocean. The cost and the weight would far outweigh the benefits you're getting of the energy efficiency, which is where hydrogen fuels like ammonia and methanol will come into play. And obviously, round trip efficiency is of the least concern when you're able to capture electricity from solar or wind farms that you would have otherwise had to dispose off of because of an overstrained electric grid. Batteries can obviously only discharge energy for around eight hours, and they cannot store energy on a megawatt or gigawatt scale cost effectively. That's where electrolysis and fuel cell technology come into play to allow companies and businesses to store that excess electricity for months and weeks. And that is obviously right in line with what gasoline and diesel have allowed us to do. We can store these fuels for months on end without having to use them and produce them at times that are completely different than their usage. That's exactly what's allowed this technology to take off over the past 100 years. And that exact value proposition is what hydrogen is bringing to the table, except it emits zero carbon. You can now pair the electric grid and the fueling infrastructure together to allow companies to make electricity on demand without having to invest in permanent infrastructure. That right there is the true value proposition of hydrogen and the benefits it will provide to the electric grid and the decarbonization race. But as usual, guys, that is just my take on the situation. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below.